What's going on everybody, it's Delmar and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm really excited to announce that Google released the Geospatial Creator tools that are available for Unity and also Aero. In this video, we're going to be covering all about it. I'm going to walk you through from start to finish, how you can create a project. I'm also going to have you deploy it to your iOS device and also Android. iOS was a little bit of a pain, I'm not going to lie, but I was able to get it working and also documented the entire process for you. And then we're also going to be looking at an experiment that I created. I'm going to walk you through that experiment where I wanted to go to downtown Salt Lake City and basically take the entire city and convert it into an alien invasion. It's basically a very simple version of an alien invasion, but I think just having the world as our canvas is going to be a big deal when it comes to augmented reality. I also want to cover not only what it is, but also what are some of the APIs costs associated with it and limits. I couldn't find this information easily through their documentation and I had to dig into a lot of different documents and I was able to find a disclaimer that basically had that information. So I put it all together in a slide that I think is going to be helpful for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at a demo that I created first and then we'll jump into creating a project from start to finish. So let's talk about the experiment that I created by using Geospatial Creator. So first I spent the last few days testing these new tools where I was finally able to have an excuse to go outside. I spent a lot of time in this room so you know that that was a great, a great thing to do. Second, I searched for a few outdoor locations in Salt Lake City by using a combination of Google Earth and also Google Maps. I found a great high rising building to be able to test this out, multiple of them, and also was able to test it on a lower altitude so that I could see how that would work. And lastly, I recorded each latitude, longitude, and altitude, plugged them into Unity, and I was able to basically get everything deployed to iOS and also Android, and everything worked great. You're gonna need to enable billing, so just make sure that you do that. They won't charge you anything until you basically, these features go out of experimental. That's when they're going to start charging. And I'll be covering that next when we get into APIs and limits. So to get started, once you add a billing, you basically gonna go and create a new project. I already have two projects, but I wanna create a new project right from scratch. So it's going to be basically create a new project here. And we're gonna say it's gonna be your AR prototype. And I'll just say YouTube. And then if you had an organization, then you could select one. I don't have one, so just go ahead and hit create. And then as soon as you do that, you're gonna land in here. That's gonna give you a lot of different information about which APIs they have available. And the one that I'm gonna be creating, it's going to be the Map Tiles API and AR Core. So what I'm gonna do though, is if we go into here, into the navigation menu, and then you can go into the library. I think this is the easiest way to basically get to it. And then here you can just type in tiles and then you're gonna be able to find here the map tiles API, just click on it. And then it's gonna tell you that you, in this case I have it enabled because it's on the wrong project. But in the project that we just created, which is gonna be the AR prototype YouTube, now it's going to allow me to enable it because I haven't enabled it on that project. So you can have multiple projects with different APIs. And that's what I need to do here, just enable that. And then once you enable it, we're going to be able to basically use it. So once it's enabled, it'll say here, getting it started, it'll give you an API key and you can basically copy that and then paste it into the project. Let's just, for now, just ignore that piece and go into, go to the Google Maps platform. For the simplicity of this video, I'm just going to be creating an API key specifically for, actually for two different services. So that's going to be the first service. And then if you go back in here to APIs, and let's go ahead and click on the navigation menu and then library. Now we need to add another one. This one's going to be AR Core. Just search for that. And it's gonna show you this AR Core API, just select it. And then just make sure you are on the same project, which we are, and then just hit enable. And this is gonna be the backend for the AR Core project that we're going to be working on in Unity. Okay, so once you have those, then we're gonna go into here, into credentials. And it's gonna have a Maps API key, and we could use this one and have one separate for the other one. We can just create one for both of them, and you can do that by just basically clicking on Create Credentials, API key. And then once you do that, just gonna create an API key here, and then we can just copy 
Basically, I'm just gonna copy that and I will keep that in our clipboard. All right, guys, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and create a new project with uh, Unity Hub. And I'm gonna be using 2022.216F1. Then just go ahead and select the location. I'm also going to be using the 3D URP. Just make sure that you do that and just go ahead and hit download if you don't have it. And then we can just give it a name here. We can say it's gonna be Geo Spatial, so Spatial Creator. And then I just say probably demos and then just put it in a folder. And then just hit create in Unity. It's going to be creating the project. Let's go ahead and go into a window here and then package manager. And then once you click on it, I'm gonna be able to add a URL. So this URL I'm gonna be dropping in the, basically in the description of this video so you guys have it. And then just go ahead and paste it. And this is gonna allow you to install the AR core components through a URL. All right guys, so it looks like you got installed. So now let's look at a different package, which is going to be a tarball. And we're gonna be installing com.ccm unity 1.2.0. And I'm gonna be putting that link as well in the description. Just go ahead and hit open. Okay, so it looks like these got installed. And then now if you go back into the extensions here, you're gonna see there's gonna be a samples folder. The one that we're going to be importing, it's going to be geospatial samples. So just go ahead and Hit import. All right, so we should be good to go. So now under scenes, I'm gonna go ahead and rename this scene and we can just call it Geo Spatial Demo. And then just double click it, just so that everything is refreshed. And then we can get rid of, we don't need the main camera. We also don't need the global volume. I'm going to go into the sample here. And there's gonna be one thing that we're going to need to copy, which is going to be basically just the AR session origin. This is something that is deprecated and I'm not really sure why the AR core team is not using the XR origin yet, but I'm going to follow their examples and I got it working with this version. But just know that if you get this warning for now, it's okay, but at some point they're gonna have to update it, otherwise Unity might remove it and that might break the whole thing. So for now, just know that we're using the AR session origin and some of the older components of AR Foundation. Okay, so once you open it, we can just go ahead and paste this. We're gonna enable it. And a couple of things that you're gonna need right off the bat is yes, this has the AR session origin. You're gonna need the AR anchor manager. The AR earth manager is also going to be needed. The anchor manager is needed because when the earth starts tracking, it basically is going to use anchors to determine where are the anchors that we're trying to place in the world. So you're gonna need an anchor manager, otherwise you're gonna get an error, we don't need a plane manager, so I'm gonna get rid of that. We also don't need a raycast, we're not raycasting anything. And I also don't need the streetscape geometry manager. This is so that if we wanted to know what the geometry is of the buildings that we have around, we can use that for raycasting, we can use that to basically place different objects for occlusion as well. I'll cover that in future videos, I just wanna keep this very, very simple so that you guys can get it all working. So the next thing that I'm gonna do though is I'm also going to be creating another component, it's gonna be the actual session, and it's gonna be basically for our augmented reality session to start tracking. And then I also need to, I think I have everything here set up correctly, and air session, and everything looks good, okay. So now that we have those core components added, we're also going to need basically a controller, and that controller it's going to be coming in through a different folder that I'm gonna be adding, and I'm also going to be explaining what that is and how does it work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop this. This is gonna be a simplified version of what they did on their geospatial demos. And I think it's going to make it a lot easier for you to understand. So that's why I ended up doing it this way. Okay, so once you open it up, you're gonna see this geospatial manager. So I'm gonna create a new component here, geospatial manager. And then we can just drag and drop that component. And there's gonna be a couple of things that this is gonna need. It's gonna need the Earth Manager, the Air Core extensions, which we haven't created yet, and also a status text. So the first thing that I'm gonna do though is let's go ahead and create a very simple uh, canvas that is going to give us some of the debugging information. So it's gonna say import basically text mesh pro essentials, because we're gonna be displaying that information. And then this one we can call it, I think I ended up calling it just geo, we can just say geo spatial and we can say status. This one I'm also going to call it just UI. And then this manager, now we can just associate this to that. The earth manager, we can grab it from the air session. And then air core extensions we haven't created, we can also 
quick click here, go ahead and create it. And then if you go here under XR, AR Core Extensions, it's going to add this component that it's going to require that we associate the session with the session, session origin with the session origin, and also the camera manager we're also going to need. There's also going to be a couple more things that we are going to need. And it's going to be a AR Core Extension Config, which we can also create right now. So let's go ahead. I think I have, a, oh, I actually have a settings folder. Let's put it in there. Let's go ahead and create and then go into XR. And then we're going to be creating the AR Core Extension Config. And then what this is, is going to have basically what, what we want to enable. We can enable Geospatial, which we're going to have. We don't have this tree, basically this treescape geometry. We didn't add it. We can enable it if we wanted to, and also semantics if we want to basically use this video series for those. But just know that Geospatial is going to be the one that we're going to be needing for this video. And then the other thing that I'm also going to need, though, is if we go in here into XR, it's going to be, uh, and these are all optionals. I just want to have them just, just to make sure that we can look at everything that is available. This is going to have a target camera frame rate, also depth sensor usage. And you can look at the settings in here of what you want to target. The URP balance render, and you go down, we're going to be adding a render feature. And this one is going to be the AR background render feature. If you don't add this, basically AR core or the AR kit when it runs on the device, it's going to show black. So this is really important that you do. If you don't add it, it's not going to work. So just make sure that you have that currently added. Once you do that, then the next thing that we need to do is we need to set up our project to work with Android. So I'm just going to go ahead and basically switch everything to be Android. So just go ahead and click on switch. All right, so it looks like everything switch over to Android. Let's go into player settings. And then we're going to go and make sure that we have some of these settings correctly. This is going to have to be changed to gamma. So let's go ahead and change that to gamma. Okay, so it looks at like that finish. And then we can just go ahead and remove that. So we only want to have OpenGL ES3. So once you do that, we're going to go down here until we find the Android minimum API level. This one is going to be level 28. We're also going to be using IL2 CPP. Just make sure that you change that. And I'm also going to be unchecking the RMB7 and ARM64. So now jumping to the iOS. And in iOS, we're going to have to make a couple more changes. So we're going to need the camera usage description. I'm also going to check this to say automatically sign because that's going to help us when we deploy this to iOS and it's going to automatically sign. And then if you have a team, you can also specify a team. I'm not going to be covering a lot of that, at least not right now. But when we jump into my Mac, I'll show you how that works. The camera usage, we need it because we need the camera for augmented reality. So we can just say for AR. And then location, we also need location because we're going to need that to be able to do the geospatial location services, which this is also going to need. So this one we can say is going to be for geospatial. Geospatial, you just need to have some information in there added. And then there's going to be one more setting here. We're going to need to require ARKit support. And then that should cover everything that we need to do in iOS, in Android. This one we can just put Learn XR or you know your company in there. And then we can just say geo spatial demos 1.0.0.0. And then now jump into the XR plugin management. And this is where we're going to enable Apple Air Kit. Because even though this is running on Air Core behind the scenes, Air Kit is the one that is getting the information. And then on Android, you're going to need, I keep thinking about iOS, you're going to need to change this to be basically have the Google Air Core. So just make sure that you enable that. Once you enable that, we should be good with these two. And then under AR Kit, we don't need to enable anything in there. We're not going to be using face tracking. AR Core extensions, we do need to enable Geospatial because that's what we're going to be using. And also Geospatial Creator. It's going to come up with these, you know, these pop up. Just say finish. And then we should be OK. Otherwise, it'll take us, I think, to some type of documentation. And then the next thing that we need to do, though, is I'm going to go ahead and enable these for to also work with iOS, basically iOS support. And then you can also specify here if you want to use an API key. And then in our case, we're going to be using an API key and also an API key. So we're going to be using basically iOS and also Android. So that's what these two are. 
And then if you go back to basically grabbing our key, which I copy, which this is not good, like the, I'm showing you the API keys. It's not that you're going to use it. It's just keep those really secure. In my case, I'm gonna delete them after the fact in the project. So I'm not really worried about the API key, but in the future, just make sure that you don't show that API key to anybody. And then basically just put in that API key on both of those settings. So once you have those, I think we're good to go for actually starting to grab some of the information that we need for the tiles to be able to re be rendered in Unity. And then let's go down in here just to make sure that I have everything correct. Okay, so we should be okay. And then project validation, it's always good to go and check it and then look at iOS. So everything looks clean in there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go ahead and add the components that we're gonna need to be able to render this information, right? So if you go and right click in here, go into XR, we can add, and if everything installs successfully, you're gonna be able to see these two different options. We're going to be adding the AR Geospatial Creator Origin, and this is what's going to do basically all the magic. So click on Add Cesium Geoference Component, I think that's how you say it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste our API key in there as well. And then if everything works, we should be able to see a cool map in here rendering and a lot of different information here in our log. And it looks like things are looking good, right? It's displaying some tiles, so that it's a good sign. So let's go ahead and go here into the game view really fast. And then I'm gonna change this to be something like portray. And then maybe we'll just put this on the side and then we have the same view on that other side. Now what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and go into Google Earth and I'm gonna pick a location. I already picked the Louvre Museum in Paris. And the cool thing with this is gonna show you here a URL and this has the information that we're going to need in Unity, which is basically the latitude, longitude and altitude. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a rubber right here in the front of the museum so that it can greet everyone that is going to Paris. And basically you can do anything. You can place objects all around or pick a different location. This was just something that I wanted to do. And then if you go here to the AR Geospatial Creator Origin, we wanna go ahead and paste those values. I'm gonna go ahead and paste the attitude. I also want to do the longitude, and lastly, we're also going to be doing the altitude. And then just make sure that I uncheck this 2D, that way we can see everything that is happening. And then I'm also going to go ahead and hide the UI layer so we don't have that right in front of us. And then if we pick the location correctly, we should be able to see here in just a minute how it's going to start rendering all the different tiles. I'm going to go ahead and snap the scene view here, and then we can probably just make this a little smaller. That way we can focus on this entire area. And you can see that we're getting tiles, right? And this is gonna be part of the area that you requested. It's going to also have a lot of different areas. So let's see if we can find the area that we just requested, which is going to be right over here. It looks like it's still, it's still rendering. And there's multiple options in order for you to make this render like faster or occlude it. And I'll show you that as well, but for now, let's just go ahead and look and see here what's happening. And if you look at it, here's the same map that I show you right here on Google Earth. And we can see this angle, and then if we go back into Unity, you can now see that same exact same map. So it's gonna show you that. There's also different features in here that I've been experimenting with that I, that I really like. You can look at all the different options, but the one that I, I recommend that you do is this show tiles in hierarchy, and that way you know what's happening. It basically is going to show us every single tile as it gets generated in here. And this is important because these are the, the 250,000 requests that are gonna be as a limit, and there's also one, you know, a limit for the root tile, which is going to be covered on the next section, but you also can create physics meshes, which is really important like if you wanna do that. You can also change the level of detail, so just go ahead and look at some of the different options that you have available in here. Okay, so now that you have that, let's go ahead and add a 3D object. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull an object that I've been that I've been using for quite a while, and that's going to be the robot that I want to that I want to add. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into assets, and you can also download this from the Unity Asset Store. 
and it's a free asset. So I want to give a shout out to the creator of this asset because this is going to be something that I'm going to be using quite a bit. And then let's go ahead and create a new folder here and we'll call it third party. And then I'll just put that asset right inside. That way we have everything that is third party inside of that folder. And then once you add it, then we're going to go here. And then as soon as you add the prefab, you're going to see that it's going to show this magenta color. And that's because the materials need to be converted to be URP. So I'm going to select all of those materials, go here into assets, actually edit, and then rendering, and then material, and then just go ahead and convert them, hit proceed. And then that should fix the issues with the color materials. Then to add basically an object, what I'm going to do, and this is a little bit different to how Google did it. They use a terrain option for the anchor. I'm going to be using basically a manual one because I had issues with the terrain. It wasn't really working well. I know some people in my community that, that use it and it worked well, but in my case, it didn't work well. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use it basically the manual altitude. So the way that, that it's going to work, you're going to see that, that it go, it's going to place that object at a specific location. So what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to go into my prefabs here and I'm going to drag and drop this prefab actually inside of it. And then you're going to see that as soon as we do that, it's going to basically place it right over there. So what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to move this actual anchor and we can move it. And you're going to see that as soon as you do that, it's going to change some of those values. So I'm going to put it maybe right Let's see, let's get into the entrance. Then I'll put it right in front of the entrance so you can greet everybody. Maybe right about there, it's okay. It doesn't need to be spot on. But then I'm just gonna go ahead and just, actually I'm going to rotate the character here. I don't wanna do the anchor. Just rotate the, the, the character and then maybe this guy's going to be, so we can make it gigantic, right? It's gonna be something like that I think works. And then we're just gonna have the gigantic robot greeting everybody and he's on the floor so it looks like that looks good to me and i think we can just rotate it maybe a little tiny bit here and then everything else in here should be okay and looks like that guy looks good and then maybe we can just instead of changing this value i'm going to change the anchor because that's going to be the most precise location right you want to change the anchor you don't want to change too much the the character because the anchor has the augmented reality data okay so it looks like that's good so when i say terrain there's multiple ways you can do a terrain and it's going to try to calculate where there's a terrain the best way possible i had issues with that when i try and test it in front of my house so i'm just going to use manual altitude i think i think that's okay so what's going to happen is when i go to this location it's going to try to localize this location either by using the GPS on this or the visual positioning system. And then it's going to basically instantiate and create and create that object. So I think that's everything as far as like this object. We also have the, the actual geospatial manager. And then the only thing that we didn't do here is we didn't add uh, an association with the AR core extension. So the last thing that I want to do though, is before we deploy this, I'm going to, let me go ahead and look at the Geospatial Manager and just kind of give you a brief overview. If you go down here, when this component gets enabled, we're going to try to basically request location services. The Android implementation is a little bit different than the actual iOS implementation. So for Android, it's going to get permissions based on permissions that come from the Android namespace. And then for iOS, it's going to basically use the input location. So just make sure that you look at these so that you understand how location services is going to be enabled and also look at the implementation that Google provide, which is, which is a lot more robust and it goes through creating anchors with the new features that they provide. So now that you know these, let me show you what we need to do to deploy it to iOS. For Android, it's very simple. All you need to do is go into build settings and then just make sure you connect your device and then just build it in deploy. But for iOS, there's a little more into it that I want to show you. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, guys, so I went ahead and changed this to basically be right in front of a location where, where I am right now. That way I can show you this running. I can't go to Paris right now. So that's why I ended up doing the robot. But basically I just changed the location and also the anchor and resize it just a tiny bit so that it looked the way that I wanted it to look. 
So what you need to do though is you need to deploy this. Let's say that I wanted to deploy this to iOS. So what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna go ahead and change this to be the be the platform. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on switch platform. Okay, so it looks like the finish switching. So now we can go ahead and either do build or do a build and run. I also recommend for now just do a development build. That way we can see what's happening in case we get any errors. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and choose allocation. I'll do that build geo and then hit choose. Just say replace in my case because I already had a folder in there. All right guys, so it looks at like this build and it'll automatically open up Xcode. So once it builds, it, sh it should be good to go other than we need to add a couple of different dependencies. You can see right now that one issue is going to be the actual development profile. So for that, we can fix that pretty quickly here by just selecting a team. And then basically it's going to assign that team. The other thing that you'll need to do though is we also need to add another package and that package is going to actually go into our packages and then you search for AR and we can see here AR Core iOS and then just click on a package and you can see it, that it pops up in here. Just click on that one, enable it and then just hit a package. Also going to need to do one more thing. So I think we need to go into build settings here on the project and then search for a bit and you're going to see that enable big code is going to be set to yes. Go ahead and change it to no. And I think that's everything that I needed to do to make this work. We can test it here, but just trying to build it to my iOS device. All right, guys, so I got this working. You can see the gigantic Robo outside my house on the road and shooting. You can also see some of the tracking information on the bottom left and also latitude, longitude, altitude, and that data is getting updated in real time. So let's look at API limits and costs, which to be honest, it wasn't that easy to find out, but let's look at map tiles API, which is one of the most important ones. So they provide a maximum of 300 root tile set queries per day. This is calculated as a sum of all the requests for all applications using the basically the credentials that I show you how to create. And then you can see that that's going to be the root tile. So this is only going to display, this one displays all the time, but anything underneath it's going to display as long as we enable that feature that I show you when we did the demo to basically display those tiles in the Unity Editor. And then there's a maximum of 250,000 render tile requests per day. This is the one that I kept on hitting the first day that I tested, I think I went beyond I think it allowed me to do about, I think it was 250,000 and then I stopped. I started getting 429, basically hit the limit. So it didn't allow me to download any more tiles requests. So just keep that in mind because as you use it, that's going to be the limit. There's a way to request more, but that's something that you can look through the Google console. And then the rate limit, it's 12,000 queries per minute. This could be, an issue if you have maybe multiple people working on it, multiple people using the same key. And then, so just keep that in mind because that's going to be one of the limits. And then the cost of this is free. And that is a disclaimer that I was talking to you guys about at the beginning of the video. And they didn't really say how much it was going to be after they just say your, your use of photorealistic 3D tiles in the experimental stage will be free of charge and require you to enable billing on each of your projects using basically this feature. We have no obligation to notify you when your free trial ends and we reserve the right to modify or terminate the free trial at any time without notice and in our sole discretion. So this it's great and I appreciate Google giving us this for free, but I would basically be very cautious about what you enable through the Google console. And then what I recommend people to do is just create a, you can go in and basically create a budget and also an alert. So you'll get alerted if your, you know, your thing goes viral and all of a sudden you're getting all these requests. So just keep that in mind when it comes to, you know, creating experiences that use this. I, unfortunately, I don't know when that free trial, it's going to basically expire. I'll keep in mind and, and as soon as I hear otherwise, I'll just keep you updated. But just be cautious about that. These are just some of the tiles that I have in this project where I was doing the invasion prototype. So the next API is the AR Core API. And this is basically the backend to AR Core. There's also limits. This one is 100,000 requests per minute. And this is used for various backend methods used by AR Core. 
It has also a maximum of a thousand sessions started per minute. And then when I went through the panel, because I wanted to find out what this is doing behind the scenes, this is just me playing with the APIs for a few days. And I added the key and then I went through and looked at what things were called. And basically it's just, you know, check availability was one of the methods that got called. This query facades, it's one of the ones that got most of the basically requests. And it's interesting that it had a 100% error rate. And then localize, this is something that I assume that it's doing because of what we're doing with Geo Spatial Features, a start session and so on. So this is just me just playing for like an hour or two. And I can see some other requests going through, but just keep in mind that these APIs are going to, some of them are free, some of them are not. So I would basically be very cautious about, no, I trust Google, but at the same time, there's no limits on how much they can charge you. So adding a budget, it's a very smart way to do and basically alerts so that you know what's happening. I don't want you to go and try this out and then say, Dilmer, I have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars and I, I don't want that to happen. So just be cautious about it when you're testing these tools. At the same time, if you're spending about an hour testing some of these or two hours, it's not going to cost you anything. I actually went through and look at my billing and I haven't gotten, you know, right now it's free, but when it comes to the time when it's paid, just be cautious and look at the console. I don't think it's going to be that huge of a deal when you're playing with it for, you know, for development purposes, but I'll keep you updated. And that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you on this video as far as Geospatial Creator. If you guys enjoy this video, if you want to learn more about future features that AR Core provides, just let me know in the comments and I'll be more than happy to cover those features. Thank you very much, guys.